While gay rights legislation is gaining momentum, with the Supreme Court deciding to take on gay marriage, those in the gay and lesbian community still face huge hurdles every day, from bullying to outright discrimination. And for gay Latinos, these issues can be compounded by their own culture, even their own families, forcing many to suffer in silence. For Cynthia Abundis, the idea of revealing her homosexuality to her very traditional Mexican family was something that she not only worried about, it consumed her. We know our Hispanic backgrounds are very religious or they're very firm on their culture. And it's hard to get a new idea into them. Singled out by bullies at school, she felt she had nowhere to turn. I would get locked up in the restrooms. I would miss my ride home just to hide from the bullies. It's hard. I remember I would cry. And when I had to go home, I had to put a smile on my face because I didn't want the family to know what's happening. Because if I tell them I'm getting bullied, I'm going to have to tell them why. When she was 15, Cynthia built up the courage to tell her mother. And it did not go well. I would have never expected my mother to react the way she did. My mother wouldn't talk to me for like about a month. Um, my mother slapped me for the first time ever when I told her, Mom, I like girls. Eventually, she felt she had no other choice but to leave home. I didn't feel betrayed inside myself. I thought I was betraying my family. It's like, I'm not what she expects of me. So I thought I failed my mother as a daughter. Looking for help and a place to fit in, Cynthia eventually found Bienestad, an East L.A. based nonprofit dedicated to assisting gay Latinos. There were so many traumatizing events in my life that I didn't know how to say them or to who to tell them. Oscar de la O founded Bienestad as a direct response to the AIDS epidemic in the 80s. He realized that no one was looking out for the Latino LGBT community. It was from the very different needs that Bienestad encountered from the very beginning were specific, such as uh, material in Spanish, material that was developed in the level of education of the people we were working with. But also there were the complex issues of the homophobia, the isolations and how do you come out to your family whether you are at risk for HIV, um, the need for support from education, health promotion, mental health, substance abuse services. An individual can come in and find something as simple as a network of friends. Others, like Joey Terril, find refuge in art. Discovering his sexual identity put Joey at odds with something he held deeply personal, his religion. At the age of, um, I think I was 13, and I was at Sunday Mass, and I heard the priest give a talk, and it's the first time that I heard him speak out against uh, gay people. And like a light bulb going off in my head there in church, I thought, he's wrong. He's way wrong, because I know who I am. And at the time, I thought, Jesus loves me, and I'm a good person. And in, in high school, when I really came out, uh, I went to Cathedral High School, um, Catholic, all boys, pretty macho. Um, and uh, I came out in my junior year, and in my senior year, I attempted to take a guy to the prom in 1973, and uh, it didn't go over very well. Many of these conflicts are reflected in his artwork. There's things that are as direct as that from real life to more conceptual kinds of works. I've always liked and grew up in the midst of you know pop art, popular art. I work from a lot of uh, photographs. Since my work uh, has been biographical and um, about my personal experience, when HIV and AIDS came along, I couldn't ignore how the community was decimated, uh, including my own friends. And uh, I'm now, you know, for self-disclosure, 32 years HIV positive, and that became incorporated in my work. The other thing that I, I, I like to inform people about is who I am. In terms of the, the, the dual identity, to me, they've always been merged as one. You know, and, and whenever, you know, bigotry is shown to me for being Mexican or Chicano, uh, it feels no different than the bigotry being shown to me for being gay, and sometimes from within my own community. So I can't separate one from the other.
And when you live in the public eye, like Senator Ricardo Lara, cultural and sexual identities can take on a whole different meaning. Being a gay man and a gay Latino was always a factor in my career decisions. For many years, I thought, you know, I would, I never would have imagined when I was working in the halls of Sacramento that I would get to be on the chamber, on the floor of the assembly, now on the floor of the Senate, representing my community, because I just thought it was not an option for me. But it was an option, and it became a reality when he was elected to the state assembly in 2005. And now he's the first openly gay person of color to serve in the California Senate. To have the validation for my community means the world to me, because this is where I grew up. This is a community that raised me. My sexuality never became an issue. People wanted to really understand what I was going to do to really change the, uh, the lives of our young people here in the Southeast. Senator Lara also helped start the LA-based Political Action Committee Honor Pack, which promotes Latino LGBT issues. We felt it was important to talk about issues that were important to us. You know, obviously, you know, gay marriage is important, but we also cared about bilingual education. We cared about immigration reform, but still there are kids that are being bullied in schools. There are kids that still are contemplating suicide, and there's kids that are not in safe, healthy environments. And so as a legislator, I have to do everything I can to keep those kids safe. And just like me, there's a lot of gay kids who are in my community and who want to see role models. And to now be able to provide that for them and tell them that whatever you want to do, you can do it. You know, just apply yourself and work hard. And with some dedication, you'll get to where you want to be. When we come back, the son of a Chicano music legend takes his story to the stage.